Gamer Poet strives to create the most informative and easy to navigate tutorials available, driven by viewer feedback and contribution. What some would do in multiple videos, we do in one. Since the videos are packed full of so much information, a lot of which the general viewer may not even care to know, navigation is provided to accommodate the individual as much as possible. Navigation is appropriately labeled within the sidebar via annotations to each major section. Occasionally, if and when it's needed, a sliding tray will drop down from the top right of the user interface. This has been implemented to allow viewers to skip over information that does not pertain to them in a progressive manner without having to check the video description or without having to guess while dragging on the timeline. However, the video description does provide navigation to every section of the tutorial step by step and I recommend that it be utilized on subsequent viewings. Finally, video platforms such as YouTube are subject to change. The GamerPoet's video interface has been organized in a way that hopes to weather future amendments within the platform. Though, the older this video gets, the more potential there is for the annotations to be hindered. System Requirements Your operating system needs to be Windows 7 or later. Your CPU has a minimum requirement of being a dual-core 2.0 GHz processor or equivalent. The recommended minimum for heavy modders is an Intel Core i5 equivalent or higher, and ideally a good i7 is what you want. System RAM The minimum requirement for the vanilla game is 2 GB. The recommended minimum for heavy modders is 8 GB. Ideally, you would like 16 GB. The GPU. The minimum vanilla game requirement is 256 megabytes of VRAM. Recommended for heavy modders is to have 3 gigabytes of VRAM or higher, ideally 4 gigabytes. Monitor resolution. The minimum requirement is 1366 by 768. The recommended minimum is 1920 by 1080. Disk space. The minimum requirement for the vanilla game is 10 gigabytes of free HDD space. The recommended minimum for modders is 40 gigabytes of free HDD space. Ideally, you would like to have a dedicated 256 gigabyte SDD or larger and 100 gigabytes of free space on an HDD for mod archive storage. This tutorial requires a legit and up-to-date version of Fallout New Vegas 1.4.0.525. Outdated or stolen copies are not guaranteed to work properly, if at all, when modding your game later on. Windows User Account Control has been known to and proven to interfere with certain modding applications downstream. If Steam is installed to one of the Program Files or Program Files 86 folders, be sure to apply the installation location steps in the following section. If Fallout New Vegas is already installed and you are searching for a workaround to this issue, View the user account control video linked in the description. Apply the steps within to the Fallout New Vegas folder itself. Option 1. For those who already own Fallout New Vegas via Steam. Open Steam. Navigate to your library. Right-click Fallout New Vegas. Select Install. Choose Location for Install. Select a location outside of the Program Files and Program Files 86 folders. Option 2. For those yet to purchase Fallout New Vegas, go to store.steampowered.com. Search for Fallout New Vegas. Select the Ultimate Edition to acquire all of the DLC. At this point, a lot of popular mods are going to require it. Enter your birth date to continue. Select Add to Cart. Select Purchase for Myself. Sign in if you aren't already. Complete the purchase. If the install window does not automatically open after your purchase, open the Steam application. Go to your library. Right-click Fallout New Vegas. Select Install Game. At the Install window, choose Location for Install. Select the location outside of the Program Files and Program Files 86 folders. Select Next. If you receive a Terms window, select I Agree. After installation begins, select Finish. Option 3. Installation from Disk. The benefit to having the game disc is that installation will be faster than downloading the game from Steam. Although you have the game on disc, you will still need to log into Steam to finish the installation. Insert the first disc into your computer. Push the Windows key plus R to open Run. In the Run window, type the Steam drive letter colon backslash steam backslash steam.exe space dash install space the DVD drive letter colon. Select OK. 
launch Fallout New Vegas through Steam or via the Fallout NV Launcher.exe. The Fallout NV Launcher is located in Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Fallout New Vegas. Simply bringing up the Fallout New Vegas menu will establish all registries and any files. Without doing this, certain modding applications will not work. Select Options. If the Detecting Video Hardware window opens, select OK to default all game values based on your system's capabilities. Graphics Adapter Automatically displays your GPU. Aspect Ratio Displays the proportional relationship between your monitor's width and height. Resolution Set to the highest resolution that your monitor can handle. Lower the resolution to trade quality for better performance. Anti-aliasing. Directly related to the jagged and crawling lines at the edges of objects. Select 8 samples. If using an EMB graphical preset, set to Off Best Performance. Anisotropic filtering. Directly affects texture clarity that is displayed at an angle on screen. Select 15 samples. If using an EMB graphical preset, set to Off Best Performance. Windowed mode. If activated, Fallout New Vegas will be run in a window on the desktop as opposed to utilizing the entire screen. Allows you to maintain a sharp in-game image while running the game lower than your monitor's native resolution. I have windowed mode deactivated. Vertical sync. If activated, vSync will cap your maximum FPS to your monitor's refresh rate to avoid screen tearing. Activated or deactivated, vSync is forced on by the game engine, so there's no need to give this option any attention. I simply keep vertical sync activated. Screen effects. Determines the type of lighting effects applied in game. None. Provides basic lighting, which makes for an acceptable sky image, but leaves the rest of the world appearing flat and washed out, lacking depth and realism. Bloom. Adds a glow to lighting, in an attempt to make it appear more realistic. However, this option is not dynamic and makes the sky glow unnaturally bright. HDR. High dynamic range dynamically alters light based on the way it interacts with various objects and surfaces while taking the player position into consideration. This option makes the game world much more vivid than without and provides a more realistic contrast between light and darkness. More intense than the other two options, but not enough to make the others worth choosing. I have HDR activated. Show All Resolutions. When activated, allows you to view and select all resolution options in the Resolution drop-down menu. All of the settings mentioned from here on can be raised, lowered, and or turned off and on to trade quality for performance. Test them for your own system. While modding your game will use more and more resources over time, these settings are a good, middle-of-the-road starting point for everyone. Even the options that are turned up all the way, at this point in gaming technology, most users should be fine. Furthermore, changing any of the settings from here on out within the launcher will reset your any files. It is recommended to only use the launcher before modding your game to avoid errors. When you have begun modding, you should edit the any files directly and avoid the launcher altogether. Using Mod Organizer allows you to avoid these worries. Choosing the Low, Medium, High, or Ultra option will implement a preset of values for all of the options within the Advanced tab. Choosing Default will reset the options to what they were at the end of the Basic Registry in any file section. Open the Advanced section. Texture Quality Affects the depth and detail of all textures. Set to High Radial Blur Quality Affects the amount of blur during situations such as being struck in battle. Set to Low Depth of field determines whether or not depth of field will be used in game. DOF can cause a decent drop in performance for some. Unless you absolutely love this feature, deactivate it. Transparency multi-sampling is a form of anti-aliasing which is applied only to transparent textures such as foliage or chain link fences. Works well alongside other anti-aliasing methods. Only deactivate the checkbox if using an ENB graphical preset. Decal cap appears to only affect blood decals. Set to 10. The Water tab. Water refractions. Simulates the bending of light on water surfaces and gives objects viewed beneath the surface a shimmering and distorted appearance for purposes of realism. Activate the checkbox. Regarding reflections, Fallout New Vegas water appears to, in almost all locations except behind the Hoover Dam building in Cottonwood Cove, only reflect the sky. Buildings, terrain objects, and even characters are not reflected at all, regardless of reflection-related settings in most areas. This creates two potential options other than manipulating the individual settings expressed in a moment. 
One, the opportunity to turn off water reflection options to save the slightest amount of performance. Or two, the opportunity for all system owners to turn water reflections up to their highest values to receive the best visuals in the rare case that they are visible. Water Reflections Toggles water reflections on or off. Activate the checkbox. Reflection Quality Affects the quality of water reflections. Set to high. Soft Reflections When activated, makes reflections more hazy and realistic. Due to aforementioned information, you can deactivate the checkbox to save some performance if desired. Full Scene Reflections When activated, reflects all nearby scenery. Due to aforementioned information, you can deactivate the checkbox to save some performance if desired. Full Detail Reflections When activated, better quality reflections are generated. Due to aforementioned information, you can deactivate the checkbox to save some performance if desired. Water Displacement Generates a rippling effect when your character moves through water. Personal Preference Activate the checkbox. Some EMB users, depending on the preset, may be informed to turn this setting off. Depth Fog Affects the level of murkiness in visible fogging on the surface of water, except when underwater. This creates much more realistic shorelines when activated, opposed to when deactivated. Activate the checkbox. Water Multi-Sampling Anti-aliasing for water. However, there is no visual difference in the jaggedness of water, regardless which option you choose, and there is a decent impact in performance even in areas where there is no water. Set to low. Shadows very few objects in game, other than your character and NPCs, actually cast shadows. EMB graphical preset users can change these settings at a later time in the any files if needed. Using the ambient occlusion effect that comes with EMB will imitate shadows for static objects to an extent, but not entirely, less shadow-like and more as if objects are being shaded. EMB will be covered in its own tutorial. Enable shadows. Allows shadows to be displayed in game. Activate the checkbox. Shadow quality determines the overall resolution of cast shadows. Due to aforementioned information, to save some performance, set to low. Shadow filtering controls the way in which shadow edges blend with their surroundings. Due to the aforementioned information, to save some performance, set to medium. Max interior shadows determines the maximum number of possible shadows when in interior locations, set to 6. Max Exterior Shadows determines the maximum number of possible shadows when in exterior locations, set to 6. View Distance Object Fade Controls the distance at which a range of non-critical world objects such as rocks, fences, and pathways are visible, set to 8. Actor Fade Controls the distance at which characters and creatures can be seen, set to 8. Grass Fade Controls the amount and distance at which grass, shrubs, and small bushes are visible, set to 7. Specularity Fade Controls the shininess of various objects and surfaces, set to 10. Light Fade Controls the distance at which lighting is cast from dynamic sources, set to 35. Item Fade Controls the distance at which items, such as weapons and armor, can be seen, set to 8. Shadow Fade Controls the distance at which shadows fade from view, set to 10. Distant Lod Tree Lod Fade Controls the distance at which tree lod can be seen, set to 40. Object Lod Fade Controls the distance at which major world geometry can be seen, set to 50. Land Quality Controls the quality of distant terrain and should be set to 150. Close the Advanced window. Select OK on the main Fallout New Vegas Options window. Select Exit. Installing Fallout New Vegas is time consuming. Reinstalling Fallout New Vegas from an archive is much faster than downloading the files from Steam. Creating an unmodified backup will allow you to quickly reinstall the game if it is ever deleted for any reason. If you want to install Fallout New Vegas, returning the files from the archive that we are going to create to their former locations will reinstall it. Navigate to Steam, Steam Apps, Common. Right click and copy the Fallout New Vegas folder. Paste it on your desktop. Navigate to the Operating System Drive Letter, Users, your user account name, Documents, My Games. Copy the Fallout New Vegas folder. Go to the desktop. Create a new folder. Name it My Games. Paste the Fallout New Vegas folder inside of the new My Games folder. In the File Directory bar, navigate to the C Drive, Users, your user account name, App Data, Local, Fallout New Vegas. If you do not have permission to access your App Data folder, you will have to enable folder permissions. A link to how is in the video description. Copy all of the folder's contents. Go to the desktop. Create a new folder. Name it App Data. 
Within app data, create another folder, name it local. Create a final folder within local and name it Fallout New Vegas. Paste the information just copied into the new Fallout New Vegas folder. On your desktop, click and drag the mouse over the three new folders, Fallout New Vegas, My Games, App Data. Right click and select Add to Archive. Name the archive Vanilla Fallout New Vegas. Navigate to Steam, Steam Apps, Common. Right click the Fallout New Vegas folder, delete it. Navigate to Users, your user account name, My Documents, My Games. Right click the Fallout New Vegas folder and delete it. And finally, navigate to the operating system drive letter, users, your user account name, app data, local. Right click the Fallout New Vegas folder, delete it. Thank you to those of you who have watched this video and to those who have encouraged this creation. The Step Project, Fear and Loathing in New Vegas, GeForce.com, and the Fallout Wikia are all sources that have been used as reference. A huge thank you to SRB of Step for both looking over the script and providing me with some good references, as well as being the original creator of the Fear and Loathing in New Vegas guide. And a huge thank you to Mono Accipiter, a mod author who has taken the time to look over the script as well to update some of the information and to provide me with some ENB information, as well as for maintaining the Fear and Loathing in New Vegas guide. As always, I am Michael of Gamer Poets. Thank you for watching.